So <clears throat> I made the second bar there, as you can see. I've got it all lined up. Mm -hmm. I just tacked it on the top there, but I'm gonna have to take it out a little bit. It's just not quite, it's a bit short there, but it's perfectly level. So I'll take you around and show you. You can see the level's good. The level's not in the center, but the, uh, the Wasserbagger, as it's said, known in German. Uh, but it's straight. And you can see here, it's a little bit, uh, a little bit shy. So what I'll do is I'll undo a couple of these tacks and open it up slightly, but the profile will stay the same. It'll just be the angle. Uh, and I'll mark it and I can get that in place. And that gap in there is where the window will be. Um, obviously I want it strong where the window position is. Um, I could come down a little bit further, but the reason I'm staying at that height, just to explain why I'm doing that, is <clears throat> I'm going to have to make this the back of this cab in two sections because it's too ha too big to handle. Uh, not just because it's too big to handle, but it basically won't go into the mechanically it won't go into the throat of the um, of the bead roller. So I can't put the bead in the back of this and put the bead round where the window is going to be in one sheet. The throat won't take it. So I'm going to have to do it in two, uh, in two halves, which will make it a lot easier to bead roll. And I can use this here as the, as the lap over point um, where we lead load it afterwards. And more importantly, I can do it to, for this piece here because I can B roll this section here to go into this concave bit. And that'll put a bead lower down and then the window at the top is going to be the easiest way. It does mean welding it all, but it, that is what it is, I guess. But anyway, so that's basically the positioning. What I need to do now, as I said, is just open this up a little bit and come out a couple of mil. And I also need to, to uh, cut this little back bit of, of an angle so it's more flush with that upright. And I think you can just see the gap on the other side. I don't know if I can go in, maybe you can just see the gap. Yeah, you see how there's a gap on the other side there, at the top? Well, actually, you know, I'm almost all the way down. So what I'll do is I'll give that, a, take a little edge off that, and that'll make it nice and uh, tight fit when I weld it. So I'll give you an idea just how much work is involved in making a bend like that. You can see how many plug welds there is to do that. And obviously grinding is, you know, you, you grind and then you find a little pinhole and you've got to go back over it. So it's a lot of work to make one corner. Uh, but I'll show you it in the next clip when it's cleaned up. This one has been tacked. I've adjusted it slightly and then I'll go and weld this one afterwards. So there we are. I'll bring you back when uh, when this one's tied up. It looks like it's been on the bottom of a ship with barnacles all over it. Okay, so that's it. Uh, it's one end done. As you can see it's got a nice shape to it. The odd little pinhole here and there. It's nothing. I mean, it's an inside internal bar. There's a few little pinholes in that one, so I can get in the light. But generally, it's strong and it's good. But to make uh, two ends, cut them, uh, get them right, get the angles right, weld them up, and clean them, you're probably looking at an hour and just over an hour a bar, which is uh, quite a lot. But they do look nice when they're finished. It's got nice. Uh, a nice shape to it, you can see there. Anyway, so I'll crack on with that, get this one in tonight, and possibly a couple of uprights. That's the second bar in, it's just tacked in at the moment. These are really good magnets if you're interested in getting these one with the on off switches, they are absolutely brilliant, nice big surface area, and they stick like there's no tomorrow. Far better than these uh, red ones, they're shit, they, they gather so much uh, um, cuttings on it and uh, dust whereas with these you can turn them off and wipe them much much better idea these uh, magnet ones anyway, so I just tacked it in just now um, so I've spaced it out that way as I said for a couple of reasons one for this uh, body line and secondly I want the window approximately the same size window that's in the front that's 27 and a half centimeters and I can fit a 27 and a half centimeter window in this with the beading around it as well. Within that picture frame there is where the back window will go. And they are 35 and a half centimeters between each bar. 
each crossbar across here between here and here so the next one will be 35 which brings it right here in line with that edge um, again the cab is still not welded to it at the moment because I have to f work out uh, this top piece on here so before we when we cut all these these little tack welds off on each side on the bottom we can lift it clean the bottom part of this B pillar paint it and then get it welded in place and get it exactly the right height and then what we'll do then is where those new feet are here and here in the corner we'll weld them onto the box section and we'll also weld it onto the front where so there's a bolt in the front I'll see if I can bring you in so you can see there's a bolt there in the front leg which has a spacer tube in it, a crush tube and then there's another bolt going through the side where that triangle is and that has a crush tube in it as well so it's bolted there and there it will be bolted on the front on both sides that side's got to be fixed up this week that's, I'm sorry, that's missing there so that's going to be the same as this one here I shouldn't pan in actually it should bring it back out um, yeah but we just want to make sure that the bolts are in exactly the right place so basically there will be eight bolts it will be the one in the front the one in that triangular section the one in front of the A pillar and then the one here back at the B pillar um, and then we can weld that in place lift the cab up take the chassis down onto the floor drop the chassis back onto the onto the ramp and uh, then we can work on it at a normal height rather than up in the air the way it is now and then I can build the back while it's sat on the ramp so, so uh, Amir and Rafka have come back from Bosnia we got back here about 10 o'clock ish and um, so they'll start work tomorrow morning but there's sort of quite a few jobs to do around the garden and the house so but hopefully he'll give me a hand with this tomorrow and we can uh, speed up a little bit We've got a bit more work done on it. So we've got this third bar made now and then we'll connect this up So there'll be one from here down to there the same on the other side and then one in the middle Because obviously we want the support in the cab and we don't want it uh, Rattling but it will be welded all the way across so I can't see it's going to make any noise Plus we'll bead roll it as well, which should give it some strength and it will stop um, oil canning like we will with the sides but uh, we're getting on so we're just building that new leg over there get that in place so that's it for this video um, I went out and bought this, went to work with uh, I think it's a German outfit they make really good quality stuff not cheap but it is good quality stuff so um, I went out I've been wanting one of these for a while and what it is is actually a, uh, a rib nut set take this out so you can see it so basically it's a rib nut set with five different rib nuts on it right up to eight um, I need this for the XK150 to do some pipe work on the bulkhead and a few other bits and pieces but I also need it for the Citroen behind me what we're actually going to do is um, uh, and I could have got the one with the pull together arms but the problem with them is is sometimes they're in a tight space and you can't get in with them and this was a good strong quality tool it's quite expensive for what it is but there is a hundred rib nuts or of five so there's 500 rib nuts I think that's why it was a bit more expensive the other thing I did as well is I bought myself to a really good set of uh, metal shears aircraft uh, snips so very happy with that so uh, we should be getting on, like I said, with a lot more on the on the vehicle soon, and we'll start doing the metal work, the outside metal work, once the main frame is built, uh, which I think will be a lot more interesting because it'll be using the bead roller, using all the equipment and stuff that we have. So um, I hope you join us on the next one, and as usual, stay safe, keep the faith, enjoy your hobby, and be good to each other. Take care, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.